Just an old sweet song leaves Georgia on my mind. Before I begin, let me say right here and now that I'm a country boy. And man, I mean the real backwoods. All I ever saw, and I'm talking literally, was the country. I was born September 23rd, 1930, in a little town where you hear folks talking about being poor. But when I say we were poor, I'm spelling it with a capital P. Even compared to other blacks in Greensville, we were at the bottom of the ladder, looking up at everyone else. Nothing below us, except the ground. <laughs> <laughs> now my mama, she believed in going to church. Ours was the shallow Baptist church. Now I. I like the best for the sang. You see, music. Music was my first religion. William James once stated, acceptance of what has happened is the first steps to overcoming the consequences of any misfortune. We all know the legend that is Ray Charles. But before the icon, he was a boy losing his sense of sight. Adapting to everyday skills, he had to learn to master the piano blind, discovering that music is, in fact, his passion. Ray allows to look into his past and attain that regardless of what struggles he may have faced, with the power of music he was able to overcome. Brother Ray by Ray Charles. I think I was born with music inside of me. That's the only thing I can think of. None of my relatives could sing or play an instrument. <laughs> you see, music was one of my parts, like my ribs and my heart. And my walls are plastered with pictures of Billy Holiday, Miles Davis, Clifford Brown, and Center Rollins. I could always sense something taking a side of me. A rhythm, a beat, a pulse. <coughs> you see, I'm a composer. I can write on demand any time if I wasn't too sleepy. There's a therapist making a song, jazz or otherwise. There's lyrics, notes, and lines you set up. I'm currently working on a song I like to call George. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Georgia, mm -hmm. I know, going blind sounds like a fate worse than death, doesn't it? Seems like something I'll get a little get down. Make me afraid. Leave me half crazy. <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you it happened that way. <coughs> At least not with me. I lost my sight gradually. My eyes started tearing. But they weren't real tears, but matter that was thicker. It was mucus. It didn't take Mama long to realize what was really happening. I was never too frightened, though. Images began to blur, and I saw less and less. Soon horizons grew shorter. Far away distances were fading. I could make out large forms. Then only color. Then only night. The doctor tried to do as best he could treated my eyes with ointments and drops, but there wasn't much she could do. But you see, Mama was a strong woman. She wasn't afraid. She didn't weep or scream for the Lord's mercy. She knew what she had to do. Mama always wanted me to learn new things. She had me scrub the floors, chop wood, and play with my brother George. She taught me numbers, the alphabet, and my favorite, the piano. It was a beat up upright piano but the most beautiful contraption I'd ever laid eyes on. 
You see, I learned that there are piano keys to be mashed, and not mashed. I started making sounds out of feelings. I knew jazz. I love jazz. Now I, oh, I could play jazz. <laughs> I want y'all to know something. Blindness never broke my spirit. I played on like all kids, getting into more trouble than I should. Had my own circle of friends, but I always raised some help. My brother George, even though he's a little older than five. Now George and I were always together. We'd slurp down Kool-Aid and go racing off into the woods. Exploring the world amongst our back against the trees, in the ponds. And at home, George would play with his toys while I played on the piano. We were inseparable. One afternoon, George and I playing out back, always messing around with Mama was signing. Now there's this huge tub, a number four tub I think it's called, <coughs> filled with rinse water. <laughs> we love to splash around them and play like we're swimming. I can hear George climb inside, kicking his legs, tuning and hollering. Seems like someone's having a good time, huh, George? George! 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 And then he screams. And I realize he isn't playing. My heart starts pounding like it might explode. I'm hearing my brother drown. I raise the tub and I, and I try to get him out, but I'm too weak. No, George, George, Mama! her run past me to pull George out as she tries to breathe life into him. She pumps him and slaps his back as her tears fill onto his face. No, 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 mama, no, please, no. She stops. She rests a hand on my head. Then she picks up George's limp, still body and carries him inside. It's too late to do anything else. My brother's dead. And then my mind goes blank. I know there was a funeral. I know there was mourning and weeping. But I don't remember. You see, I can't remember crying. But when I played <coughs> that old beat up piano, the music released feelings inside me. It took some of the heartache some of the sadness, and it turns it out. By expressing myself in music, I can soften the flow. <coughs> now that's something I do. I guess it's a part of me and George. Till I die, I'll play for you, George. I'll play. <coughs> Georgia. Georgia. A song of you. Just an old sweet song. Georgia, oh my.